Hello there, I'm Craig Erickson, here to tell you a little tale about the city of Allen. This series will take you a little deeper into the history of some of the landmarks around town. Today, we'll relive the first train robbery in Texas that took place right here in Allen. People would sneak aboard a train and try to steal something, but in terms of stopping the train at gunpoint, separating it, pulling the express car down the track some way, keeping them isolated from the passengers, this was the very first one. Sam Bass was probably a very likable fellow, very personable. He was illiterate. He did not want to work for a living, and he'd rather steal. Sam Bass was born in Indiana. It was his native home. And at the age of 17, young Sam began to roam. Sam first came out to Texas, a cowboy for to be. Kinder-hearted fella, you'd seldom ever see. In 1877, 26-year-old Sam Bass and his gang committed the infamous Union Pacific train robbery in Nebraska. After returning to Texas, they pursued robbing stagecoaches. This endeavor was less lucrative. So on Thursday, February 21st, 1878, Sam Bass and his men, while camping outside of Allen, contemplated another train robbery. Allen was really way out in the boonies at that time. So as with the Union Pacific robbery, which was held in a very isolated spot in Nebraska at a watering station, uh, they probably thought this was an, a, a way to, uh, to, to quickly hit and not have a pursuit by a posse that could be quickly gathered together. The man that was helping them, Tom Spotswood, who was from the Collin County area, probably was familiar with it, and I would suspect that uh, gave them some idea as to this is a possible target. There were four men, Seaburn Barnes, Frank Jackson, and Tom Spotswood. Tom Spotswood was uh, a reported man killer out of Missouri. Uh, Frank Jackson had been a tinsmith apprentice in Denton, but he had killed a man before also. And Seaburn Barnes also had been involved in problems in Tarrant County. What a scorching. So they all had a little taste of violence. No one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip. The stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip. Gang member Tom Spotswood was sent into town to scout the situation. He entered Bud Newman's saloon at the southwest corner of Main Street and the railroad track, now the Brookshire's training center. Passing himself off as a gambler, Spotswood inquired about the train schedule and learned it arrived about 8 o'clock. Friday night, southbound train number four departed from Denison about an hour late. The train was composed of sleeping cars, a passenger car, mail car, express car, and 175 unsuspecting passengers. After a stop in McKinney, the train continued south to Allen. As the train stopped at the station where Deshaun Street, now Main Street, met the tracks, an unmasked bandit appeared and ordered the engineer William Sullivan and the fireman off of the engine cab. The fireman was forced to the rear where he was told, Partner, we don't want to hurt you or anyone else. All we want is the money in this car, and we're going to have it. James Thomas, Texas Express Company's messenger, had the express car door open for a delivery when he heard a voice call out, Throw up your hands and give us the money. Thomas initially thinking it was a joke, Can I help you? quickly realized the men were serious. He engaged them in gunfire, but the door was open. He had one bullet left, and the ammunition that he needed was in plain sight, so if he went to it, he was going to get hurt. When the mail car agent heard the shots, he closed his door and turned out the light. The bandits had promised that they wouldn't hurt him if he surrendered, but said that they were prepared to burn the express car. We're going to burn this car if you don't come out. Thomas still refused to surrender. After the engine and express car were separated from the other cars, Engineer Sullivan was forced back into the cab to drive the engine and express car forward 60 feet. Thomas, I won't hurt you if you surrender. He's an outlaw loose and running, came the whisper from each lip. And he's here to do some business with a big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. So discretion again being the better part of valor, he decided to surrender. They came on, they got him to open the safe. 
uh, and they, they took what the, uh, several bags of money, between fourteen fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 was the estimate. Then they unloaded uh, Jim Thomas's gun and gave it back to him. Take it. Returning James Thomas's lantern and unloaded pistol was one of many kind deeds that gave credence to the Sam Bass as Robin Hood legend. In other robberies, there are tales that Bass refused to rob the elderly and that he gave coins for lunch money to poor passengers. They're robbing the train! They decided not to rob the passengers who were all scurrying about trying to hide their money in places money wasn't supposed to go and uh, trying to find a weapon and they couldn't find one. I think they had a toy pistol was all they could come up with from a child. So with that, the gang then left. Sam Bass and his gang left Allen and headed west to their hideout in the thickets along Hickory Creek, now Lake Louisville. In 1967, the late Frank Matthews, son of one of Allen's earliest teachers, recalled being interviewed for a story for the Dallas Times Herald. While walking along the railroad track to attend a church meeting, he and two other boys witnessed the Bass gang and their horses camped south of the station. Other stories say that someone rushed into the church meeting alerting the congregation about the robbery, but the bandits had already disappeared. These accounts were useful, since photographs were rare. Another prominent attribute that assisted in apprehending Tom Spotswood was his disfigured right eye. Once the Bass Gang was gone, the train was recoupled and continued on to Dallas. Upon arrival at Union Depot, passengers again hid their valuables thinking there was another robbery because a plainclothes policeman refused to allow them off the train because of a reported criminal on board. The officer may have misunderstood an earlier bulletin that stated, Train number four was robbed at Allen tonight by a party of six men. Express car robbed. See conductor of train and get particulars. The passengers of train number four finally disembarked. Later accounts, including statements by Bass himself, state that the bandits split $1,280 four ways. After the Allen train robbery, they pulled three more train robberies in and around the Dallas area. Then the chase was really on, they were pursued, uh, and then finally left North Texas and headed south, down through Central Texas and ended up in Round Rock. When they got to Round Rock, Seaburn Barnes was killed during the gunfight, uh, and Sam Bass was, received a major, a mortal wound, and Frank Jackson was able to help him leave town. Uh, then outside of town, Bass was, a, was left behind because he couldn't ride. He was shot in the gut, and Frank Jackson disappeared. Bass was brought back to town, and on his 27th birthday, July 21st, 1878, he died. And that's how Allen Station assumed a prominent role in railroad history. For more information on Sam Bass, contact Tom Keener at the Allen Public Library. Be sure to watch for another episode of The Tales of Allen here on ACTV 15, Allen City Television. I'm Craig Erickson. I'll see you around town.